A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful 23rd of April, 2023. Coming up the podcast, episode 205, 205, only 60% correction, only 69% government funded and Health Canada's manifesto. Yes, and more NATO drama and all other stuff coming up. Please stick around. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, episode 205, only 69% government funded, the outrage of CBC, based on Elon Musk's posting of that on Twitter, and an uh, interesting manifesto coming from Health Canada. Uh, this episode is also brought to you in part by Battlefit Bodywear, ladies and gentlemen, be Battlefit, be battle ready. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, sorry for my absence there yesterday, I had some extra issues to sort out, and even today, trying to record this podcast for you as well, too, how to reconfigure the cams and and all that good stuff, try to get things on the go, and uh, well, you know, it's it's been a little hectic today, but if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe, and listener discretion and viewer discretion is advised, because I tend to swear and smoke cigarettes on this podcast, so get the meat potatoes. In recent news, especially here in Canada, the CBC is outraged because, oh my God, Elon Musk posted on the CBC Twitter page that it's government funded. Now, I don't know about you, <laughs> but since I was born here, since my parents were born here, my grandparents were born here, everyone knew that the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation has been partially funded by the Canadian taxpayer. That simple. Canadian taxpayer has foot the bill for the CBC for a very, very long time. Uh, this year alone, I think the tune of $1.4 billion has come from the Canadian taxpayer in regards to making the CBC what it is today. A uh, propaganda machine. Now, I personally don't care how you feel about the CBC. I can honestly say that since the better part of 2014 and early 2015, CBC programming has gone down the poop chute. Why? Because they put on subpar programs. In the name of political correctness, their news sources have been extremely biased, as you can tell. And it doesn't matter if it's been biased towards uh, Mr. Harper when he was prime minister or the her majesty, or, correction, his majesty's opposition in our parliament. They have done nothing but promote the liberal brand since 2015 because of all that money coming in, right? So, so all the outrage that goes into this whole uh, BS when it comes to uh, funding and all this. Well, what's wrong with it? It's the truth, isn't it? And I would have to say hats on to Elon Musk for promoting that and saying, hey, okay, here's this source, here's that source. Well, they're government funded, they're government funded. So what's that tell you? What gets me is why is there the outrage? Why is, the, why is there such an outrage in regards to uh, CBC being government funded? And it doesn't matter if it's 69% or 70% or 25%, they're still receiving government money, which is taxpayer funds. Now, my concern is why can't they actually put on some decent programs? You've got the flagship programs. This hour has 22 minutes. You've got the, the, the flagship news programs, the national, right? With Rosemary Barton, you know, Justin Trudeau's little girlfriend on the side, if he's not throwing it to Melanie Jolie, Right or throwing it to whoever he pleases, like his old man. But I digress here. We forget that the media does not dictate terms of our lives. Okay? I remember taking this these classes back in high school in regards to media studies and understanding the BS that some news programs or news networks, the whole too big to fail BS, okay, and some of the stories they promote, right from the first uh, Gulf War back in the 90s to the second one, in the early 2000s. A lot of BS. And you, my wonderful audience out there, I'm sure you can remember how the mainstream media covered the Freedom Convoy in this country. Always looking for that hidden Nazi. Always looking for that hidden 
hidden racist and a hidden misogynist and those those terrorists. Oh my goodness, people just want to be left alone. And how the mainstream media handle that? It it took independent media outlets such as the Rebel, True North, right? Greg Wycliffe, comedian, citizen journalist, right? Daniel Boardman, you know, raging dissident, just to name a few. They were actually at ground zero and talked to people. Okay. They were actually at ground zero talking to people. Now, what did the CBC do? They spent more time worrying about that shithead with the Nazi flag. Same as CTV, same as Global too, right? And prior to the convoy, you know, they all said, make sure you got your masks on, make sure you got your jabs and your jibby jabs. And, don't associate with your family members if they don't have this. So creating a lot of dissension and division in between people. Why? Because they get government money. I'll leave uh, some links in the description there for you, ladies and gentlemen, for you to read along and to decipher at your own will. But there's quite a bit of a hoopla in regards to, you know, CBC being labeled as government funded. Well, it is. It's that simple. And regardless of how many times Justin Trudeau sits there on his podium on his little soapbox and dictates terms and criticizes Pierre Polyev and other members of the opposition, trying to find some light in this darkness, he still has to sit there and toot the virtual horn of, well, we do this for you and we help the, uh, the desolate areas and the resolute areas in regards to broadcasting. And, and I can understand that if you're in the high Arctic and there's no other reception up there other than CBC. Okay, I get that. But as far as I know, every journalist has a responsibility to their readers, to their viewers, to their watchers, to their listeners, right? If you're going to write a story about something, you get the story. You try to get different angles rather than just a narrative that your producer or editor wants you to promote. Because you're, you're not being a journalist. You're just being a note taker. You're just being <laughs> a secretary like you see in those old movies, Miss Hansen, here, prepare to copy. Write this down. That's all it is. And these journalists that sit there and back up the Trudeau regime, we get it. You're just lining your pockets with taxpayer funds. You're just trying to save your job, right? Because we, we've all seen how newsprint has come and gone. Still lingers in certain spots, but people just come here and get their information. Whether it's my podcast or this podcast or that podcast or this independent media outlet, such as I mentioned, Rebel, True North, you know, Druthers is another one that's coming up, right? They all have a very, very non-biased approach when it comes to understanding things. And regardless if they're conservative-based or if they're libertarian-based or if they're actually classically liberal-based, they're actually out there hustling, getting the stories out to people that really want to know. Rather than just a notional couple or the notional people coming home at 6 o'clock, Putting on the news, having their soup and supper, watching the same thing over and over again. Okay. No. All right. So these individuals that are harping about CBC being government funded, well, it's the truth. And Mr. Elon Musk put the truth out there. Yes, they are funded. They make quite a bit of money. And it doesn't matter if they have 30% revenue stream or not. They still have practically 70% of the Canadian tax dollar going into their broadcasting national wide, right? And they create subpar programs. If you like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platform. And I'm also on Grow Radio UK too. I signed up for their service. Uh, they promised me some good viewership, listenership, all that good stuff. And I would like to hear my UK listeners give me their point of view too. Right? Because when you look at Canada and UK, there's a very, very strong bond there when it comes to our sense of humor, when it comes to politics. Both have a parliamentary system. Both have prime ministers that are just right the hell out to launch. Okay? And I'm sure there's a lot of my uh, Brit compatriots out there that are really sick and tired of this woke propaganda garbage. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, but uh, still, if you want to hear and see more of my mug and hear my words, on your stream, please check me out. Krusty Connect Podcast and Grow Radio UK. You can also find me on Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Player FM. And you can also find me on the tube on Rumble too. And my Rumble is out there. Thank you once again. I'm getting a lot of Rumblers coming up. I'm getting a few more subscribers every day. So thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. You guys are awesome. You're all awesome. And my listeners and subscribers alike, please get that going. 
And please check out my shop too, customizedgirl.com forward slash S forward slash Krusty Canuck. I got hats, t-shirts, swimsuits, drinking flask, paraphernalia, all with the Krusty Canuck logo on them to get yours today too. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, smoking too many cigarettes. So as I was saying, carrying on with the whole issue in regards to, yes, only 69% government funded. The outrage, CBC, of course, you see Justin crying up there. And uh, the Health Canada Manifesto. Now, it was brought to my attention by the fine people at True North Media uh, who <laughs> who brought this story out. Andrew Lawton did a great show on it and all that, too. I'll have the article here for you uh, momentarily. But uh, right now, I just uh, I'll take a little commercial break. See you in a bit. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Krusty Canuck here. Just to remind you, my wonderful audience out there, that Battlefit Bodywear was founded in Windsor, Essex, Ontario in 2019 and is a proud Canadian company. All of our apparel and accessories are purchased and printed right in our hometown by local independent business owners. And we pride ourselves on quality and customer satisfaction. At Battlefit Bodywear, we believe that every person has a warrior with them waiting to come out. Our brand is meant to inspire and, and fan the internal flame. Regardless of what your thing is, take it to the next level and be the best version of yourself that you can be. We also believe in that maintaining balanced lifestyle is a key to a good life. and includes having a regimented and productive fitness and exercise schedule. Motivation comes and goes, but discipline will get you across the finish line. Get there with Battlefit Bodywear. Krusty Canuck says so. Cheers. And that was Battlefit Bodywear. That's right. Be limitless. Be Battlefit. Battlefit Bodywear. Links in the description. You can find their fine products for all of your gym and workout routines. Anyway, carrying on again, too, with episode 205 the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Only 69% government funded the outrage plus health Canada's manifesto. So I come across the article there. Well, I actually heard the news report from Andrew Lott and his show at the fine people at true North media. And uh, they were talking about the whole issue about how health Canada has issued something in regards to um, white supremacy, colonialism, all that good stuff. And what I will do is uh, I, I will read this story from the people at cap there uh they're quite interesting individuals they're good people you know i may disagree with some of their politics on a regular level but this is a story they put together and i'll just read along for you as ladies and gentlemen right uh i'll just cue this up here and we'll get this sorted out right but uh, yeah i just I, I read this and i heard andrew lawton's show and i wasn't really thoroughly impressed okay, now we've all seen dr tam and her bs when it came uh, to uh, how she treated the whole pandemic, you know, don't go outside, put on your mask. That's right. Use glory hole, all that good stuff. I don't do it as well as Ben Bankus, but uh, let's just say that uh, <laughs> he does a great job when it comes to uh, <laughs> his impressions of uh, Miss Tam there. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the impressions. Um, oh God, what was her name from Mad TV? Miss Swan, you know, hello, hello. You look like a man. So Miss Tam look like a man kind of thing. Anyway, I'm not trying to make fun of my Asian audience out there, uh, but I think you know what you're getting. Anyway, I'll just read along the story here too. This is from uh, the fine people at, at uh, CAP, Cultural Action Party of Canada, uh, based on the voice of social conservative movement. Uh, this is by Brad, one of the writers there at that page. That's all he says in his page. Yeah, all he says in his page. Uh, colonialism, white supremacy, blame for climate change in Canada, right? A new report from the Public Health Agency of Canada is breathing new life into what is commonly known as the blame game, endorsed by Chief Health Officer Dr. Teresa Tam. A new government report blames colonialism and white supremacy for the global climate crisis. Uh, in quotes, their increasing public health leadership that centers on decolonization, justice, and equity. There's that magic word, folks, equity, that experts understand underscored the problematic relationship between injustice system racism and climate change vulnerability what we heard perspectives on climate change and public health in canada delivers a diatribe against those believed to be responsible for climate change and poor health among our citizenship the experts you know how they say it, always the experts suggest several areas of potential contributions across public health systems these include the following the greater public health leadership centering on decolonization justice and equity 
Okay. Enhancing political will and public health courage in climate action, shifting values and moving to health and well-being economies. Pardon us all the heck, but the people at CAP fail to see the connection. And I fail to see the connection too. Are Canadians supposed to believe that an indiable link exists between historical racism and climate change? It appears this way. Sounds like a pile of propaganda, does it not? Yet common sense Canadians must understand the dynamic. It's what occurs in society undergoing systematic transformation in political orientation. Examples include communist revolutions in China, Cuba, and the former Soviet Union, as well as Nazi-occupied Europe. Okay? In each case, government can make outrageous claims, vilify identical communities, and get away with it every time. A large percentage of the population bought what government was selling regardless of lack of logic. Think of the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. Really, think of the pandemic. Interesting. As Canada has come to this point under the ironclad control of PM Justin Trudeau, uh, if so, you won't be hearing about it from Canadian media, but you'll be hearing about Whitey's fault for climate change from a woke and white female cane professor from the University of Victoria. Now, to my uh, European and American listeners there, University of Victoria has been notorious for woke mandates. The city of Victoria itself has been notorious for woke mandates, taking down Sir Johnny uh, McDonald's statues, trying to abolish Remembrance Day ceremonies because it's deemed too aggressive, right? So there's a lot of SJWs on the Victoria City Council. A little lost, I say. Anyway, in quotes, the most vulnerable populations will face the most severe health impacts of a changing climate, such as Indigenous peoples, racialized people, people facing housing or food insecurity, people with disabilities, and of course, everyone's favorite, the alphabet folk, the LGBTQ1IA2S plus community. God, that's a mouthful. Gotcha. Meaning everybody except those who you would like to explicitly name, but out of cowardice, do not say white Canadians, Anglophones, Christians, or heterosexuals. Somehow these privileged communities fall outside the spectrum of damage created by global warming and climate change. Sounds of our communities are living on a different planet, which for the Anglo haters would be just about ideal. If a global climate change crisis exists, it means the entire globe is adversely affected. But Dr. Teresa Tam's uh, group doesn't buy it. It's, the, my God, it's an emergency. It's everywhere. The sky is falling, right? The devil's in the details, and the details are those with light skin are less impacted by climate crisis than Canada's racialized communities, in addition to homosexuals. Okay, so this goes on with basically a, a, a total conservative point of view. But from what I saw from the Andrew Lawton show and read from the Andrew Lawton show, it's the same thing. It doesn't mention Whitey, but... I think you get my point. Okay, so when you compare white supremacy and then climate change, where are these evil devils in the white hoods causing trouble? Right? Does any certain race on this planet have control on where it rains and when it rains? When the sun comes out, when the sun doesn't come out? Is there something that white people do on this planet that uh, have the magnetic shift that change the poles around so it's colder in certain parts of the world than others or warmer? Okay, so it's nothing but speculation, hearsay, and blatantly, ladies and gentlemen, just fucking garbage, right? Um, I'm I'm offended by this thing. I am. This is just this is just BS. This is just total total BS. It has nothing to stand on. It's just speculation. And really, why are health officials weighing in on the decolonization? So what do you suggest that we do then to decolonize? What do you, what do you, should I give up my job? Give up my paycheck? Give up my pension? What should I do? What should you do? Give up your, your paychecks? Give up your pensions too? We've got the PSAC folk out there in Ottawa marching and protesting, saying, you know, we demand a fair wage. Now, there's a few people in my life that are part of that union. And, you know, all the power to them. But we're also seeing an example, too, that we're seeing how many more and more unions are trying to govern and navigate rather represent the workers. Right? Notice what I said in that article in regards to how this, this big political shift is reminiscent of Cuba and the former Soviet Union and China and Russia and all these other countries that don the hammer and sickle BS. 
as well as their fascist cousins that did it in Nazi Germany and Italy too back in the 1930s. So you decide, folks. Highly, I highly suggest that you, my wonderful audience out there, suggests what to do. Now, I do my part of the environment. I make a mess. I clean it up. Right? Do I need to recycle? Not entirely. Right? Is the world going to change overnight? Is it going to be like that movie, um, The Day After Tomorrow, where the new Ice Age came in within a matter of three weeks? No. Right? Carbon tax is a scam. Every carbon tax is a scam. Right here where I live in Alberta, gas is about a buck 42 a liter. Okay. This time last year, it was roughly about a dollar 20, dollar 25, I believe. So let's say it's gone up a quarter for shits and giggles, you know, inflation. Okay. And who gets it? Federal government. And to all the lefties out there, especially ones I just engaged with on Twitter of all places, you know, tw Twitter played, Twitter paid it, right? <laughs> Those individuals honestly think we're doing the world a favor. Robbing people blind, telling people where to spend their money and how much money they're allowed to have isn't fair at all. And speaking of the Twitter crowd, I recently engaged quite a few little socialists on that page. And I think the topic, if I remember correctly, I was disappointed with Rage Against the Machine. They were a decent band back in the 90s. I'm not sure if they actually released any new music or not. But uh, they were diehard socialists, diehard lefties, right? You know, yeah, fucking uh, proletariat. And regardless of what you personally think about communism, we all know it doesn't work. Okay? 20th century proved that. So to anybody listening to this podcast who happens to be the ages of 18 and 25, and in some cases 30 or 35, if you think the hammer and sickle means power to the people, it actually means you got to get off your ass and get a fucking job and work for something. And history has proven, too, that regardless of how much you promote the proletariat and sit there and tell the world that uh, the means of operation should belong to the workers, that only happens if you get off your ass and you work for yourself. Okay, if you work for a good employer, you contribute something to that employer's business. Okay, then he or she might give you some incentive, like a raise or some responsibility. Don't tell me how factories work. Don't tell me how capitalism works. Okay, you're exchanging goods. You're exchanging. Here, you work for me. I'll give you twenty bucks. Here, I work for you. You give me twenty bucks, and then you build something and you buy something like a home or a car you build personal equity you don't just demand equity for everybody problem is a lot of these commie kids now they think they're entitled right because they're afraid to get out and get a fucking job they're afraid to get out and pay their bills and regardless of how much in inflation's out there or not there are still things that you can do to better your life okay so while you sit and tell old guys like me oh Read a fucking book. Maybe you should read a book. And in fact, while you're reading said book, have an in-depth conversation with somebody that actually lived in, let's say, Poland or the former Czech Republic or the former Yugoslavia prior to their dirty little civil war or someone who actually escaped Russia or someone lived in Hungary. Take a look at the former Eastern Bloc countries. And if you know somebody who lived there, during the 80s and the early part of the 90s, have a conversation about them, about what they went through. And to my American listeners out there who have me living in Florida, go talk to somebody who fled Cuba. They'll tell you, okay? They'll tell you exactly what went on. So don't try to tell me that Stalin was misunderstood, Lenin was misunderstood, Karl Marx was misunderstood. No, Karl Marx was a womanizer. He was a philanderer. He inherited his old man's fortune, squandered it, stuck his dick in whatever the hell he wanted to, did all this great philosophy, which he never really lived by himself, and he lived off his friends until he died. Okay? So you want to sit there and tell me that this man was a genius? Bullshit. Karl Marx, J.T., Justin Trudeau lived off his old man. 
and Justin Trudeau's old man lift off his old man. Because his old man, Grandpa Trudeau, super senior, did all the fucking work. So what's that tell you? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Anyway, enough of that horse shit with uh, Health Canada. Uh, Dr. Tam, I don't trust her at all. Uh, she hasn't practiced medicine the better part of 10 years. And, uh, you know, she changed her tune the whole time during the pandemic. She encouraged people to use glory holes. Now, if some of you of my listeners out there have never heard the term of a glory hole, think about going into a bathroom stall, okay, you know, where the toilets are, and there's a hole in the wall. You drop trowel and you drop your thing in there and hope for the best. That's a glory hole, okay? And I remember when I first heard that story, I just, what? Okay. She encouraged that. She also encouraged people to wear masks when they had sex. So intimate couples mask up before they do the deed. That really sound health advice, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> peck her up, peck her down. Yeah, so needless to say, that article I read, uh, that's from the uh, cap point of view. But like I said, I'll leave articles in the descriptions for you, as ladies and gentlemen, to read along at your own leisure. By all means. And once again, please check me out on Grow UK, uh, Grow Radio UK. Uh, I'll leave links in the description for that too. You can follow me there to my UK listeners. Hopefully, I have some new ones. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. And that's everybody there too. Everybody that watches my show and listens to my podcast, please reach out to me. Send me an email. Send me a query. If you want to debate me on something, please debate me on something. Okay. I've never claimed to have a university education because I do not have a university education. I don't have a college education. I have something called life experience. Right. And I use common sense. I'm not a racist. I'm not a misogynist. I'm not a bigot. I don't hate gay people. I don't hate straight people. Right. I don't hate bisexuals. Okay. I believe the First Nations in this country deserve a better go. I also believe that everybody who works for a living deserves a better go, too. As for this Peace Act strike, I don't believe that the tax collectors deserve any special perks or privileges. Okay? I don't believe that anybody uh, deserves just to work two days out of the week while they can work remotely in the name of safety. Right? When I go to work, I have to work 10 days straight and I get four days off. And during my four days off, I putz around my house, do whatever admin I have to do, and I make this show because I love it and I love doing this for you as all. But I'm not complaining to my boss saying, Jesus, there, buddy, can I work remotely, please? You know, can I just, you know, get the same pay and privileges and I do my job remotely because <laughs> I'm worth it? No. He'd laugh me out of his stockyard and say, see the fuck later, get off my work site okay so if it puts things in perspective ladies and gentlemen how many people out there are really entitled now the friends of mine who are part of this union i'm not dissing you guys okay but you gotta step back and think for a second too regardless of the inflationary rates that are going on the pay you get comes from the Canadian taxpayers okay and how much money has justin spent on extravagant things which brings me to a little bird told the Canadian news media, <coughs> a little bird called the Washington Post, basically Justin said in private that Canada will not meet its NATO commitments. Okay. And that's really, <laughs> that's no big surprise to a grumpy old vet like myself and to my fellow vets and to fellow serving members and to people that had been in the Canadian Armed Forces uh, prior to uh, uh, the 1980s. Papa Trudeau did the same thing. He wanted to decimate the military. Uh, the conservative government in the 1980s under Brown Marooney, he tried to upgrade as best he could. Um, back and forth, back and forth with spending, procurement boards and all that too. And then Jean Chrétien got in the early 90s and took an additional 30% of spending away from the military. So it's we've, we've been trying to recover ever since. Um, you probably heard me rant and rave about the whole procurement board and issue. And it's not just always procurement boards. A lot of it's brass on top. 
and not just uh, uniformed brass, but a lot of civilian brass, not to mention so-called stakeholders that uh, get their grubby little fucking hands in the machine too. Interesting uh, segment there on uh, today's CTV's question period. My wife and I usually watch that when I'm off on the Sundays uh, to get perspective on certain political movements and what have you. And they all were in agreement that we just need the big upgrade. Because the government right now would say, okay, we're going to give you fucking $50 billion to upgrade everything. It's going to take some time. Like I said, there's, there's too many civilian hands in the mix. My perspective would be get rid of the military housing corporation, give it back to the troops. Another perspective would be get rid of the procurement boards, put serving members on said procurement boards when it came to acquiring tanks, trucks, vehicles, planes, boats, you name it. Okay. Everything from weaponry to ammo to logistics, supplies, everything. Put military members in charge of that. Okay. And the next time we elect a minister, a prime minister, how about that prime minister actually put somebody as the minister of defense with some real military background? And I'm not saying just a couple of years in reserves or some time in the cadets when they were teenagers. I'm saying somebody who actually had about maybe five to 10 years of military service under their belt prior to them taking any kind of ministerial job in the name of defense of this country. Okay. That's just my perspective on that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, what say you? You know where to reach me. Send me a comment or two. Send me an email. I'll leave all my contact information in my description on YouTube and Rumble and other pages too, right? And if you are just watching me on the tube, please click the notification bell so new content comes up. You'll be able to catch it in a timely manner. And please share my content all over the place. But uh, that's just that's just the way I feel about it from, from being in for 20 years and seeing and doing things and working with some great people. And seeing the hardships that our military goes through when it comes to getting deployed. The logistics is a nightmare. It is. Right? But we can't have the proper logistics and we can't have the proper kit and equipment and the deployment in a timely manner if we don't have the funds and the leadership to fucking back it up. And I'm not saying the brass. I'm saying the civilian leadership too. Right? If you want something to defend this country, you got to look after it. It's that simple. But we're not seeing that. We're, we're seeing total unaccountability in regards to media relations. Like I mentioned about the CBC being outraged over being outed by Elon, a government funded. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Elon's right. And <laughs> Canadian viewers and taxpayers have been right since CBC's inception back in the 1930s. So what's the big deal? It just proves that certain people, higher ups, don't want to own their shit. And this whole manifesto that I read to you, based on Dr. Tam and her little staff, racializing things. I, I just I shake my head. Have we de-evolved? Have we regressed? We certainly have. Can we make it better? You're fucking right, we can. Keep fighting for common sense. Keep fighting for common ground. Being realistic to the best of our abilities. All right. So it's been a while since I've used this, but uh, I'm going to put it on for you as all there too. And I'm sure I still have it someplace. No, I do not. Oh, sacrament. Pardon me, guys. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I'm going to bring back the polar vortex of bullshit. So here we go. The Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. Uh, the Canadian yep. Polar <laughs> Vortex of Bullshit. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this episode's winner of the Canadian Polar, polar Vortex of Bullshit is none other than Dr. Teresa Tam. So give yourself a round of clap there, Dr. Tam. You know, well done, madam. Yes, sir. However you relate. Uh, for standing by such terrible, terrible rhetoric in regards to society's uh, problems and issues and blaming white people and colonialization, even though technically Canada hasn't been in a colony since 1982, like on paper, that is. 
Um, but I thought Canadian history taught us different. Maybe I was taught the wrong history. I don't know. But my long story, long story short, uh, Dr. Tam, congratulations on winning the polar vortex of bullshit. Well earned. One more round of applause for you. You silly cow. And uh, yeah, hope for the best. I won't be doing a live stream this Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. I will be uh, doing another episode. So we'll be doing a live stream. I tried to set up a guest for Tuesday's show. So I won't be doing a live stream, just another episode too. I haven't picked a topic yet, but uh, <laughs> I think you get my point there too. I'm just trying to catch up and keep uh, people interested in the show. Try to get episodes out there for you as all. Well, so I know you, my wonderful audience out there has something more to look forward to than me complaining about, uh, you know, our anthem and all that good stuff. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I'll do what I can to get a good episode up for you on Tuesday afternoon, if I can, this coming Tuesday on the 25th. So, but I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 23rd of April, 2023. I wish nothing but good things for you all out there. And uh, weather is getting better. So take some time out to get some yard work done. Do what you can to help each other out. Um, I know things are getting tighter for some people. Uh, but if you want to donate to my show, you can. Links will be in the description. I don't demand it, uh, but every little bit helps too, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, would you rather donate to my page or some watery tart on OnlyFans who needs validation? Right? Something to think about. Right? Something to think about. Okay? Do the music. You know, <laughs> uh, but I still hate commies. Uh, I don't really care for you as all out there. I hate Nazis. I don't care for you as all out there. Uh, anybody who wants to keep separating people and uh, and demand a proletariat's going to come and save their day, uh, they actually haven't lived in reality long enough to embrace such noble bullshit. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and get angry. Like I said, I wish nothing but the best for you is all out there. Do what you can to help each out in these trying times. A little bit of extra effort helps a long way. Little things matter. People pay attention to that. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I will see you probably Tuesday. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Mama said I had a face for radio. Thanks for coming out, folks. Bye for now.